Good evening uh, to you all and praise the Lord. As we meet again in the second day uh, of the Golden Jubilee celebration of the CCR India, uh, we will uh, be discussing another subject. Of course, yesterday we had the subject called um, CCR yesterday, and I'm sure you have heard about the so many firsts um, in the CCR, the first prayer group, the first group leaders, the first uh, the pioneers who launched the CCR into what into plat the platform that it is today. And so uh, it must have been a wonderful session, I'm sure of it. Today we will be discussing on the CCR today and what the Spirit has uh, to tell or to direct us the way forward to uh, help us discuss and deliberate on these issues, uh, we will have um, the keynote address to be uh, delivered by our Archbishop Francis Callis uh, with a message from uh, His Eminence Cardinal Mar George Allen Cherry and also Major Archbishop of the Syro Malabar Church. Thereafter, we will have a panel discussion to discuss about certain important topics uh, that has developed uh, over the years in the CCR, some of which may not be uh, very um, uh, good, some of which may not be very um, pro uh, positive, and we need to take care of them. Uh, we will conclude, of course, the session with a healing adoration by our beloved Father Augustine Valuran. Uh, that's how the day's program is. But for now, we will start the session uh, with a praise and worship session. And I invite uh, Eric Anoranha and the, his team from YU4C Chennai to help us uh, provide the uh, platform and the environment for a uh, grace-filled evening as we hear the Word of God. Uh, so I hand over the mic, the platform to Eric Anoranha. Uh, please lead us into praise and worship. Uh, and I invite all the participants to share with your heart and mind in the session, in the praise and worship session. Hello everybody, praise the Lord. Praise and praise the Lord. And uh, this is YU4C Chennai and uh, we are super duper excited to join you today in this beautiful session of worship. And my dear friends, you know, uh, as I was preparing for uh, today's worship, um, you know, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to start with? And he reminded me something that I encountered many years back. And uh, it was uh, my very, very simple meeting on a Sunday morning with one of our elder, uh, uh, one of our elders in the uh, MSE, you know. And uh, this, this lady has been in the renewal for so many years. And she's always had a smile on her face and she's always been active. Uh, you know, she would go for a night vigil and again go back on a Sunday to take catechism class. And, you know, one day I asked her, how is it that you're able to cope up like this, you know? How is it that you're, that you're able to do things back to back, you know? And she said, son, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And, and this has been a huge motivation for me all my life in the renewal. Yes, my dear friends, and today as we are celebrating, as we are really, really being joyous for the golden jubilee, I think we all need to consider this, that we need to be joyful because the Lord is our strength. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin this beautiful time of worship. Let's sign ourselves in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's just close our eyes and and gently open our arms as a total and complete sign of surrender, acknowledging God's presence in this place, keeping away all our busyness, all of our thoughts, all of our ideas, all of our anxiety, keeping, keeping away everything. Let's come to the Lord empty-minded. Let's come to the Lord with an empty mind. Let's only come here to praise Him and to worship Him and to have a throne, a throne of pra praise set in our hearts. Can we just open our hands and if you're comfortable, just lift your hands to the Lord today and just 
freely in your own very words whichever language you are comfortable can we just raise our hands and our hearts to the lord and just freely praise him oh we praise you lord we thank you we glorify your name we thank you jesus we thank you lord you deserve all the praise and glory and honor oh we praise you lord we thank you lord we lift your name on high we praise you lord we thank you we thank you jesus we praise you we thank you we thank you lord you deserve all the praise and glory and honor hallelujah 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 praise you lord praise you lord praise you lord thank you jesus yes my dear friends let's continue to praise and thank the lord today for the joy of the lord is our strength and the first song for today is a very very old song in the renewal it can be a favorite song for most of us a forgotten song the song is called oh how sweet it is to be loved by you sweet jesus can we all sing the song with a lot of joy in our hearts let's sing it together and if possible let's let's stand up put our hands together and sing for the joy of the lord is our strength oh how sweet it is to be loved by you sweet jesus let's start Put your hands together. You can smile. Here we go. Oh, how sweet it is to be loved by you, sweet Jesus. Oh, how sweet it is to be cared by you. Let's just acknowledge God's presence in this place today by putting away all distractions. And if possible, let's just close our eyes and gently open our arms before the Lord. As a sign of total, total and complete surrender before the Lord today. Let's open our hearts and offer him a sacrifice of praise for all the things that he has done. Yes, my dear friends, we worship a good God. Amen. A very, very good God. he is awesome and he is loving and he is tender and he understands us amen yes my dear friends let's allow the lord to minister to us during this beautiful time of worship yes, the lord is a gentleman and he will not barge his way in he doesn't force his things upon anyone unless you invite him he will keep knocking at your door yes, and today my friends let's open our hearts and sing the goodness of god just as a child who receives a small little sweet a candy 
from her father and she's so joyful and she says daddy i love you you are so good you are awesome you are the best dad in the whole world let's become like that small child and let's tell him how good he is by singing the song by telling him i love you lord let's sing together the goodness of god let's continue to worship the lord my friends putting away all distractions just close your eyes and allow the presence of the lord to fill you your every being allow him to fill you fill your senses fill your being let's love him and sing the song for him amen i love you lord for your mercy never fails me in all my days i've been held in your hands from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head oh i will sing of the goodness of god once more let's sing this once more all together love you lord for your mercy never fails me in all my days i've been held in your hand come on sing it for jesus from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head oh i will sing of the goodness of God. Let's raise our voices, opening our hands to the Lord. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so Once more, let's sing all my life. Let's sing it to him and really mean it. All my life, you have been faithful. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. All my life, you have been so, so. Running after us, Lord. 
even though we have gone far away from you, O Lord Jesus, but you come after us, O Lord. Lord, very often we have been like that one lost sheep, O Lord. We have gone far away from you, but you have never left us, you have never forsaken us, O Lord. You always come after us. Yes, my dear friends, let's praise and worship the good shepherd who has always come after us. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Let's sing your goodness is running after me. Running after me. One more time. Let's all sing together. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Every single day of my life. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. ourselves in God's presence, immersing, telling Jesus who's present with us, telling him, Lord, your goodness is running after me every single day. Lord, I have been unfaithful, I've been ungrateful, I've, I've gone away from you, I've rejected you, and I've ran away from you, but you have never abandoned me, never abandoned me. Let's sing it to Jesus, my dear singing to him, your goodness is running. Holy Spirit, come 
All those of us who can pray the gift of tongues, let's use the gift of tongues. Aloud, aloud and praise and thank the Lord today. Pray the gift of tongues. Let's remain silent, my friends, allowing the Lord to speak to us and through us. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, just as you fell upon the apostles that day, oh Lord, fall upon us today. Fill us with your fire, fill us with your zeal. Zeal for the kingdom and zeal for the righteousness. Help us to stand for the kingdom of God all the days of our life. And today as we celebrate, we celebrate you, O sweet Holy Spirit. Your intervention and your move, we celebrate you today. We praise you and we thank you for all the things that you are doing in our lives and in the church. Continue to inspire us and every prayer group in the city and in this country and in all that we do may we give all glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen and all the people of God said Amen, Amen. can we give a big clap offering to the Lord for he's been awesome today praise the Lord thank you Jesus once more, my dear friends, we are very, very excited and very, very happy that we were able to join you today in this session of worship and once again wishing all of you a joyous celebration. God bless and stay healthy. Thank you, Eric and team from YFOC Chennai for that wonderful session of praise and worship. Uh, I'm sure we all have been elevated in our spirits. Uh, thank you so much as we now move forward to hear the keynote address to be del delivered to us by His Grace uh, Archbishop Francis Callis, 
who is also the Episcopal advisor of the CCR in India. Uh, Archbishop Francis Callis, uh, I'm sure that term Archbishop will sound quite um, unfamiliar to him as yet because it was yet a few days that he was being elevated to this post. But uh, uh, I'm sure we will assure him of our prayers uh, that he will be able to administer um, fruitfully as Archbishop to the Archdiocese of Pondicherry. Uh, he was born in 1957 and 25 years later in 1982 was ordained priest. Um, in 2009, he was made Archbishop of Mirut, and only recently he was uh, elevated to the post of uh, Archbishop to look after the Archdiocese of Pondicherry and Gudurur. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, he was um, uh, appointed as uh, the Episcopal Advisor by the CBCI of the CCR in India from, 19, uh, from 2011, and I'm sure. Uh, we who are in the, the CCR have um, experienced his presence, his uh, fruitful presence and his um, wonderful guidance all the time uh, as we uh, conduct our meetings and our, um, uh, go about our business. He has been very, very uh, much influential, though always behind the scene all the time. Uh, yes, he is a very humble priest and bishop and archbishop and normally very quiet but um, whenever he speaks or preaches then he's a different man he's a, an, a, a bundle of energy and strength and wisdom and uh, every sermon that I've heard has never been uh, boring but has always been very interesting and I always felt that uh, there's something new that has come about and I'm sure today as um, I invite Archbishop uh, to uh, deliver this talk on what the Spirit has to say on the CCR India uh, to, to deliver this talk to us uh, now. Thank you, Your Grace. Dear friends, I wish you all a very happy and grace-filled Golden Jubilee of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services in India. I am given the topic for this talk. At 50, what is the spirit telling the CCR in India? As we are celebrating the Golden Jubilee, there is such a lot that we have got to thank and praise the Lord for the Catholic Charismatic Renewal worldwide and in a special way for the CCR in India. I want to affirm that the CCR has been a tremendous blessing to the church in India. Chevalier Cyril John has already highlighted the contributions made by the CCR to the church. I fully endorse all that has been said by him. I want to congratulate the Caris National Service of Communion the regional and the diocesan leadership, prayer group leaders, servant leaders of the covenant communities, retreat centers, ministries, and other realities of the renewal for all the hard work put in by them. We also honor those who made great contributions to the CCR in India in the Esther years and are no more with us. May they rest in peace. Now in my short presentation, I would like to highlight those areas where the CCR in India needs to make introspection and focus more as we stand at the threshold of the Golden Jubilee. As time passes, it is all too easy for us to forget some of our objectives, goals, and mission. We must always be vigilant so that we do not lose the vision, distort or misinterpret what the Holy Spirit has begun in our midst. Therefore, 
Let me now highlight the following thrust areas for you to reflect on and accord highest priority in the renewal in your own regions, ministries and realities. First, fostering of communion. Right from the beginning of his pontificate, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has been speaking about the need for greater unity among different realities and expressions of the renewal. And that's why addressing the participants of the 37th National Convocation of the Renewal in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit in Olympic Stadium in Rome on 1st June 2014, the Holy Father stated, I quote, When I think of charismatics, I think of the church herself. But in a particular way, I think of a great orchestra where all the instruments and voices are different from one another, yet all are needed to create the harmony of the music. St. Paul speaks of this in the 12th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthians. As in an orchestra, no one in the renewal can think of himself or herself as being more important or greater than the others. Please, because when you think of yourself as more important or greater, disaster is already on the horizon. No one can say, I am the head. Like the church, you have only one head, one Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Unquote. Caris was officially launched by His Holiness Pope Francis at Pentecost 2019 in Pope Paul VI Auditorium. The simple definition given by the Vatican for Caris is Catholic Charismatic Renewal International Service. It is that new single international service for Catholic Charismatic Renewal. This is because the fraternity of covenant communities was functioning on its own. ICCRS, that is International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services, was functioning on its own. And there were other ministries and realities that, that came up rooted in charismatic spirituality. The Holy Father was very keen that there should be communion and fellowship among all the realities rooted in the charismatic spirituality. Hence, he created charis. Pope Francis told the Charismatics at the Olympic Stadium, Rome, on the 1st of June 2014, seek unity in the renewal, because unity comes from the Holy Spirit and is born of the unity of the Trinity, who is the source of division, the devil. Division comes from the devil. Flee from all infighting, please. Let there be none of this among you. These were the words of the Holy Father. It's very important for leaders to be agents of unity. Because some people find it very difficult to work in unity. Wherever they go, they will create division. They are loners. They cannot work with others. The greatest fruit of the Pentecost that St. Luke highlights is not speaking in tongues or being filled with God's power, but the coming together of the Christians as community in greater unity than people had ever seen before. That is the reason why day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved because 
they enjoyed the good will of all the people acts chapter 2 verse 47 the second point i would like to make is promotion of life in the spirit seminar and baptism in the holy spirit one of the roles given to carries national service of communion and the regional and diocesan leadership by the cbci is service and promotion of the renewal in the church at the launching of caris at pentecost 2019 the holy father mentioned that he was asked to speak on what the pope and the church expected from caris the pope spelled out three important areas as priority for caris to pursue first promotion of life in the spirit seminar and baptism in the holy spirit then ecumenism praying for unity working for unity and then he said the service of the poor pope francis explained each of this and he asked i want the catholic charismatic renewal services members should work for evangelization and now for the work of evangelization he gives this three points and that is first life in the spirit seminar to conduct life in the spirit seminars to conduct baptism in the holy spirit experience and then he gives as a second the ecumenism working for unity and the third as service to the poor as means of evangelization now to share baptism in the holy spirit everyone in the church because it is the grace you have received and so pope francis says share it don't keep it yourselves secondly to serve the unity of the body of christ the church the community of believers in jesus christ he says this is very important for the holy spirit creates unity in the church but also diversity the personality of the holy spirit is interesting with the charisms he creates the greatest diversity but then he harmonizes the charisms in unity saint basil the father of the church says that the holy spirit is harmony he creates harmony harmony in the spirit and harmony among us thirdly to serve the poor and those in greatest need physical or spiritual this does not mean as some might think that suddenly the renewal has become a communist no it has become evangelical for this is in the gospel on the 12th of june 2015 at the third worldwide priest retreat at the basilica of st john lateran in rome pope francis said to all the priests he said this and while speaking about being ministers of god's grace i ask each and every one of you as members of this current of grace or the charismatic renewal to organize seminars of life in the spirit say to organize seminars of life in the spirit in your parishes seminaries schools and neighborhoods in order to share the baptism in the holy spirit how much pope francis consider this as very important that means every sections of people should go through the life in the spirit seminar which leads them to an experience of baptism in the holy spirit even in catechesis so that the holy spirit could bring about that personal encounter with jesus christ which changes our lives the church was born charismatic 
the holy spirit appeared as tongues of fire was heard as a rushing mighty wind to fill the entire house where the apostles were praying with mary the mother of our lord and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other tongues we need to restore the church back to its origin and its nature and that's why every christian has to be a spirit filled and a spirit led person and that's the meaning of being a charismatic third point i would like to make is catholic charismatic renewal to remain charismatic pope francis addressed 52000s charismatic people on 1st june 2014 in the olympic stadium and told them return to the first love he was speaking to them and he was asking in the early times it was said that you charismatics always carried the bible with you at least the new testament do you still do it today the pope is asking the crowd said yes i am not so sure if not return to this first love always carry in your pocket in your bag the word of god and read a little piece always be with the word of god this is an appeal that pope francis made to those 50000 charismatics Pope Francis told the fraternity of covenant communities on 31st October 2014 he said like this I have been told of charismatic prayer groups in which they pray the rosary prayer to the mother of god must never be excluded never but when you assemble for prayer meeting praise the lord when this move of the holy spirit began it was called ccr the catholic charismatic renewal it would have been it could have been called by some other name charismatic renewal and its gatherings are unique because it affords a forum for those in the renewal to listen to god and to operate the charismatic gifts breath of charisms the renewal will become a human initiative let's note this breath of charisms the renewal will become a mere human initiative without the power of god charismatic prayer groups should remain charismatic and not become mere pious associations or gatherings our spiritual gifts gifts of tongues prophecy exhortation teaching word of knowledge healing etc be operated in our prayer meeting we need to ask this question to ourselves in our prayer groups do we operate charisms now many prayer groups have become just mere meetings gatherings associations but the essence is missing and that is operating charisms the lord has called us for that he has poured out his spirit upon us in order to really work for the church operate charisms bring unity spread the gospel so the poor and that's why charisms are given to us in order to build up faith communities the fourth point i would like to make is prayer groups Acts chapter 4 verse 32 to 33 we read now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and one soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all two most important emphasis of the 
Catholic charismatic renewal or experience of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and weekly prayer meetings. These two are the most important emphasis in the renewal. Weekly prayer meetings to keep alive and nurture effects of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. BHS and the weekly prayer meetings are the important two emphasis that is given in the renewal. But baptism in the Holy Spirit is a deeper experience of the Lord. Now to keep that and to experience the effects of baptism in the Holy Spirit in our lives, we need to be part of a prayer group which nurtures that which nurtures the grace that we have received through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's why the importance of prayer groups. It is only through prayer groups that those who experience the BHS can be sustained in their growth to maturity. Formation in leadership, fostering of charisms and listening to God's voice are done in the prayer group meetings. In the words of Bert Casey, prayer group is the living stone of the charismatic renewal. It was God's plan that through prayer groups, we should return to the same fellowship, oneness of mind and heart, spiritual maturity, and God-centered life that existed among the early Christians. It is prayer group. It is the nursery of leadership and charisms. Nothing else, night vigils, one day seminars, retreats, conventions can substitute the forum of prayer group for follow up and growth. All these are good, but none of these can substitute the prayer group. The renewal was a prayer group based initially. Now it is a renewal center based. Without prayer group, CCR has a bleak future. Prayer groups is a nursery in both the senses, plants and children. Someone going to minister without going to prayer group is going for job without schooling. Class by class, promotion is necessary to weed out problems. The fifth point I would like to make is committed leadership. One of the strength, uh, strengths of the CCR in the early years was committed leadership. I find that good and committed leaders have moved out and begun their own ministries. New leadership is not being formed. I find that the prayer groups and the renewal is really lacking good, formed, anointed and committed leadership. We need to focus on identifying and forming new and committed leadership in the renewal. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, people perish. People break loose and become demoralized. Very true. The renewal needs leaders with vision. It is impossible for any group to remain static. There are no plateaus in spiritual life. It either has to grow or decline. Vision motivates and energizes. A leader with vision will be a person who is never content with the present reality, however good it may be. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17, we hear, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The sixth point that I would like to make is, Growing into ecclesial maturity. Instead of mature growth, we find a number of cradle charismatics, born again babies in the renewal. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 to 14, 
Saint Paul exhorted grow up into mature manhood to the measure of the full stature of Jesus Christ and not to be like little children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine taught by cunning men and by their craftiness in deceitful wiles The two important goals of the Catholic charismatic renewal are to foster mature and continuous personal conversion to Jesus Christ and second to foster ongoing growth in holiness Once I met a person who was traveling to a retreat center for the seventh time to get rid of his habit of alcoholism His wife shared that every time he attended a retreat he was freed from the bad habit but fell again with a span of one or two th- three months this sounds as if charismatic renewal retreats and outreaches have become something like intensive care units for administering to people who are in need of being put on ventilator for artificial respiration addressing all the lay movements and ecclesial communities during the pentecost vigil at st peter's square in 1998 pope john paul ii stressed on the need for the members of the renewal to grow into ecclesial maturity today a new stage is unfolding before you that of ecclesial maturity The church expects from you the mature fruits of communion and commitment. Thus, we see an urgent need for powerful proclamation and solid in-depth Christian formation. There is so much need today for mature Christian personalities conscious of their baptismal identity, of their vocation and mission in the church and in the world. There is great need for living Christian communities. And here are the movements and the new ecclesial communities. They are the response given by the Holy Spirit to this critical challenge at the end of the millennium. You are this providential response. I have a question. I have a question to you. In India the renewal is 50 years old. There are about 150 big and small retreat centers in the country with about 100 of them only in that tiny state of Kerala. There are also several conventions and retreats taking place at the national, regional, diocesan, parish levels outside the retreat centers. Thousands of people participate in such retreats and conventions. On an average about 50,000 people must be participating in such retreats and conventions every week inside and outside the retreat centers. If that is the case with a total of only 16 million Catholic that is 1.6% of the population in India How many weeks does it take for all Catholics to be renewed? After 50 years, what is the percentage of renewed Catholics in India today? Why is the number of renewed Catholics not growing with the passage of time? We need to reflect on these. It's a matter of concern that today in the renewal, we find a number of born again babies. who are cradle charismatics rather than spiritually grown up and mature sons and daughters of God. According to Bishop Sam Jacobs of the USA, he, I quote, We are called to be no longer cradle charismatics, but converted, conscientious, committed charismatics. The cradle charismatic is satisfied with the milk and pablum from God whereas the convert committed charismatic seeks the spiritual food that will enable true growth 
in holiness the cradle charismatic is looking to be fed rather than being channel of feeding others the cradle charismatic is looking for another emotional high rather than walking the journey in faith and not by sight quoted from spurred by the spirit and it is very true in our present situation we find <clears throat> people they are so much taken up by the charismatic movement they like it they want to have a deep experience and we find them going from center to center attending conventions attending retreats but the real conversion which is the go one of the goals of the catholic charismatic renewal does not take place when they go into these type of things as we call the cradle charismatics they remain in that level itself a peripheral level a level where they look for immediate fulfillment of the needs that they face maybe as some sort of healings some sort of favors and they keep going from place to place but they are not really going deeper into themselves there is no interiorization taking place there is no transformation conversion taking place there is no uh, zeal for the gospel and an ardent desire to belong to jesus and to be fully in jesus united to him these things don't take place and that is why we call that they are not matured charismatics but cradle cradle charismatics in a way they are at the emotional level not wanting to grow up they want to be there they feel quite pleasant they do not want to attend a growth retreat undergo any training or solid teaching or make use of good reading material like carries india which carries so many beautiful articles which can really uh, enable a person to mature in faith good books like the nco publications etc they are always looking for healing services night vigils testimonies to be prayed over to be counseled etc like sponge they want to receive be filled and not give so many today are seeing the renewal not as a means of deep personal renewal and transformation but for their own gratification and that's why it is a necessity today in today's context as we are in the threshold of the golden jubilee to examine ourselves and see why we are not growing deeper even in fact as pope francis launching charis so beautifully said i want the charismatics to evangelize and then he tells for evangelization we need the baptism in the holy spirit which is which can be attained through the life in the spirit seminars and then he says to work for unity they serve the poor and so the work of evangelization these cradle charismatics they do not evangelize because they are just limited to themselves if you really know the charismatic gifts is only one gift that is given to the self that the person for a personal growth and that is the praying uh, the gift of tongues rest all the gifts are given for the building up of the faith community for the work of evangelization not for one self we need to realize that it's a clear indication that many of those who are exposed to renewal experience do not grow and mature many of them slide back after the initial renewal experience which remains at the emotional level everyone who lives on milk lacks experience of the word of righteousness for he is a child but solid food is for the mature for those who whose faculties are trained by practice to discern good and evil therefore let us leave behind the basic teaching about christ and advance to maturity hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 to 14
to 14 and 6 verse 1. The seventh point I would like to make is need to focus on youth and teenagers. Pope Francis, he does it all, whatever he wants to do, he do, does it through examples. Pope Francis, in fact, he preaches what he lives. Jesus, for Jesus, that was the thing. So whenever he introduces something, it is from his own experience, from his own personal uh, realization. Pope Francis inducted a young girl into Caris and he insists that there, are, there should be youth representatives at all levels of leadership. That's something so good of Pope Francis that more importance giving to the laity, the youth, the teenagers. The lay empowerment, Pope Francis speaks so much. Unfortunately, even the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services, which is a lay movement, today the clerics take it over and they start managing it. But it has to be, we are supposed to be animating. It is supposed to be the uh, task of the laity because the lay movement, they, they are empowered by the spirit. They are living their baptismal commitment and we need to animate them to come up and bear fruit. Then that's what Pope Francis is doing. That's why he touches upon every section of the people of God. And so he gives here also more importance to the youth and the teenagers. And, we, and so he says, there should be represent, representatives from the youth group and the teenage group in every levels of leadership. Many of us are scared of youth. We need to encourage the youth. In the Acts of the Apostles, we see a leader by name Barnabas. But Barnabas wasn't his birth name. His birth name was Joseph. Barnabas was his nickname, meaning son of encouragement. Acts chapter 4 verse 36. This rather obscure Bible character was so encouraging that it finally turned out to be the name by which he was addressed. I'm so happy that Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, it is he took so much interest in the youth. He began to gather the youth worldwide. And that's how the World Youth Movement began, initiated by him, and now that is being continued. Pope Francis also takes so much of interest in this World Youth Movement. He's one with the youth, taking selfie with them. He's so friendly, makes them to feel at home. But sometimes we, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious sometimes keep them at a distance because they are, we think that they are troubleshooters. They are going to interfere in our life, in our plannings. They will be raising up because we want to remain that maintenance model. But the youth today are raising up questions which will make us to think, to make us to be, make us to be relevant, which we don't want. We don't want to be changed, we want to be that. That's why we are scared of the youth who come out with new ventures, new ideas, new avenues. We are not able to uh, cope up with that. It's our limitation because of which we keep them aside. It's not because they are troubleshooters. That's the wrong way of looking at it. But they are full of energy. They are full of ideas. They are full of new future. Venture into the uh, unknown and go ahead. That's what they need to be guided. That's what our role is supposed to be. And that's why the encouragement to the youth and the teenagers should be done. And that's why Pope Francis says that the youth are not the future, but the youth are the now of God. That's a bold statement that Pope Francis made. The youth are the now of God. For his plenary session in May 2006, the Pontifical, Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences had chosen the theme, Vanishing Youth. Looking at the threat of extinction being faced by the youth from various angles, 
the academy finally arrived at the conclusion that no society no culture can afford to suffer a vanishing youth for with them would also vanish the real hope and noble ideals of every nation how important it is and it, this statement really makes the makes true what pope francis said the youth are the now of god the recent dec- decades have witnessed this realization dawning on the church more than ever before pope saint john paul ii always went out of the way to reach out to the youth and win them over for jesus one of the exciting things in the charismatic renewal has been the way the lord is working in the lives of young people and leading them to greater depths of spirituality commitment and mission and i have been personally experiencing the contribution of the youth as i was involved in the uh, training course for the prophetic intercession ministry the amount of youth who have been part of it it's so beautiful to note that young ones coming out and bearing testimonies of their own personal experience of conversion and then being spirited with the work of evangelization so today it is really so heartening to see this and experience the youth are in the forefront in the ministry of the church the lord has been baptizing young people in his holy spirit and sending them forth for his mission but to live the gospel day by day in a climate of hostility consumerism materialism and intense peer pressure is extremely difficult vanishing youth is a serious problem being confronted by the catholic charismatic renewal as well and it cannot any more afford to continue to suffer from it it is high time that we give serious thought to it and draw up concrete plans to attract more and more youth to be involved in the renewal i have an experience about this youth the west church in the west today if you really go for the sunday eucharist churches churches are full but they are all filled with children and old people where are the young ones where are the ones who are from the age of 15 onwards till 35 they are out in the malls they are in the beaches they have lost their faith and that's why when i went to visit my brother's parish in the us in new york i found they have taken it seriously and for so for the preparation for confirmation sacrament of confirmation they have almost one year of preparation that is to hold the youth in the faith so that they remain in the faith i think we need to take much care and attention to keep our youth to remain in the faith the question is what should we do to attract more youth to the prayer groups what is the experience of other regions in the country in this regard what is to be done to raise up youth groups and ministries in the regions these are some of the questions today we need to reflect as we are in the threshold of the golden jubilee of the ccr i am happy that the youth united for christ were you for say and teams united for christ to you for say have become very active and are being promoted and encouraged by several dioceses now i have been so happy that in my diocese we used to have youth meetings the national youth commission used to conduct and in the dioceses regularly we used to have the youth meetings several youth used to participate from all over the parishes in the diocese but they were a kind of a exercises competitions but the moment now few years before we introduced this charismatic spirituality and then we introduced the youth united for christ now there are 700 800 youth participating in one particular convention and they are so much touched and transformed 
so much so in many parishes there is youth united for christ why you for see is formed and they are so active they go to different parishes the youth are evangelizing today it's really i'm so grateful to the why you for see especially our brother ajin joseph under his leadership this great work of touching and transforming the youth and making them to be evangelizers in the diocese in mira diocese i have experienced this and that is what today we need to look forward as we are in the threshold of the golden jubilee uh, of the ccr i would like to encourage more and more regions to start ou4c tu4c ministry and reach out to the younger generation and then we will have good christian uh, community the parishes will flourish the diocese will flourish the regions will flourish and this is one of the best means to catch the youth the teenagers and through T, uh, tu4c and ou4c we can achieve this the young people are the sign of hope who bring enthusiasm energy commitment creativity and dynamism to a prayer group sometimes some of the prayer groups with the elders it's so monotonous repetitive but when a youth when the youth join is so much of life even the old ones are rejuvenated and that's why i say the importance of involving and pope francis has rightly said they should be given representation in every leadership uh, uh, sections so that is one of the thing on the other hand the elders have the practical experience wisdom and financial resources to support them so it should be a mutual thing the elders should not be frightened of the youth coming and with a different ideas but we should guide them animate them promote them encourage them support them and make them part of us we are the one people of god and in this way we can renew the church one cannot be separated from the other in the church and in the renewal the youth and the elders have to work together in close partnership for building up of the body of christ the church and the renewal need the vitality initiative and the dynamism of the young people and so my dear friends as we are at the threshold of this uh, golden jubilee and we are celebrating the golden jubilee of the ccr in india let's pay attention to this some of these points that that i have raised at 50 what is the spirit telling the ccr in india i am sure we will begin another phase of 50 to reach the centenary of the catholic charismatic renewal in india with these thoughts growing and maturing and becoming committed christians forming st- strong and vibrant faith communities and in this way when we celebrate the centenary of the ccr we will find the whole church in india be charismatic and the whole church in be vibrant strong faith communities to change the nation the world that is my prayer thank you god bless you thank you very much your grace uh, for that wonderful talk on ccr today and um, what the spirit has uh, to tell us the way forward uh, you have mentioned about few essentials uh, of the ccr and uh, i'd like to point out just two of them that is that um, the essence and the foundation and the building stone of the ccr are the prayer groups and we have to focus and uh, and and not be little the presence of prayer groups in the parish level and the churches and also um, in the conduct of prayer meetings we should um, ma- uh, exercise the charism of the spirit uh, and i think from the many uh, things that his grace has mentioned i just like to point out the importance of these two elements that are so important and vital in the growth of the ccr uh, in every nook and corner of the country india I now uh, invite his eminence Cardinal Mar George Adventure 
who is also the major uh, Archbishop of the Syro Malabar Church in India, uh, to deliver to us uh, his precious message. So, um, Your Eminence, kindly uh, share with us your message. Thank you. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I am very happy to know that CCR, the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in India, is celebrating the Golden Jubilee. For 50 years now, we have been in the renewal mission of our church. Renewal is an idea, of course, proposed by the Second Vatican Council. Ecclesia Semper Reformanda. We are a church always to be renewed. How to be renewed? Renewed in the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Spirit of God that guides the church and the world at large. And in that spirit, we have come to take up it as a mission of the church. Catholic Charismatic Renewal is aiming at the renewal of the church. First of all, the renewal of all those who are involved in this renewal and also others who are to be addressed by the mission of the church. The mission of the church has two aspects. One is evangelization, preaching the word of God. And the other is really pastorally guiding the people of God as the communion in Jesus Christ. The church of God has to become in Jesus Christ, united by the Holy Spirit, a communion. And only the, by the functioning of the Spirit can we become really a Church of Christ. And the gift of the Holy Spirit was the culmination of the redemptive work of our Lord Jesus Christ. He liberated the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is the power of the Spirit that guides the church even now. You know very well that it was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost that was the beginning of the church. The church was inaugurated by the Holy Spirit. The plan of God realized in Jesus Christ was inaugurated as a reality in the church by the Holy Spirit. And this reality has to continue in the church. It is by the functioning of the Holy Spirit that we are continuously renewed in our own lives. As sons and daughters of our Lord God, and also as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we have to become really of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, guided by the Spirit, imbued uh, by His own uh, uh, gifts and also producing His own uh, fruits. Such, such a kind of life has to come into us. The theme of the Jubilee celebrations is the Catholic Charismatic Renewal today. Today, uh, my dear friends, as you know, we are facing so many challenges. But the church had to face challenges all through its history. It is nothing new. The nature of the challenges changed, that's all. But challenges are always there. Not only for the church, challenges are there for every man who lives on this earth. So such a kind of vision we should have. When there are challenges, what we have to do is more and more trust in God. To trust in God means to have faith in Him and really hope in Him. Faith and hope together makes this trust in ourselves. When we trust in God means we have faith in Him, we have hope for the future. So such a kind of attitude is very much needed today. The challenges shall not defeat us, but they shall become means for us to win with Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus Christ was full of challenges, you know. But these challenges He faced in a prayer spirit, spirit in a continuous relationship with his Father and also by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Such a kind of dual action was there was always in our Lord Jesus Christ. He was listening to the Word of God. 
to the will of God. And also he was being strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Such a kind of double force was working in him. It is in his humanity uh, that Jesus has saved us. And that humanity was continuously worked upon by God the Father and by the Holy Spirit. We should be like that. We should also be guided by God our Father. God our Father should be Father of all people. Father especially in Jesus Christ of all of us who believe in Jesus Christ. And our spirit is the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is functioning through our own talents, through our own capabilities. So we have to be intellectually equipped. We have to be mentally strengthened. We have to be spiritually sanctified so that we, may, we are to be worked upon by the Holy Spirit. We are instruments in the hands of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So such a kind of obedience to the Holy Spirit is very much needed these days. And that is uh, the renewal which we have, we can have today. Obedience to God. Brotherly relationship with Jesus Christ. And also confidence in the Holy Spirit. Such a kind of triune communion has to become a reality in each one of us. In our own houses, families, in our own communities, in our own local churches and in the church as a whole in Kerala, India and the world over. So such a kind of vision of the renewal, I would like to uh, think with you as the model for today. Let us be not be disheartened by the challenges that we face for the preaching of the word of God here in India. There may be people who do not understand the real worth of the gospel for them. And because of that, they uh, perhaps resist the preaching. They may really attack the preachers or the conveniences that we need for the preaching, our churches, our institutions, etc. But we shall not be disheartened. We shall not feel uh, uh, defeated. We are always victorious with Jesus Christ. Even during difficult times when we are facing difficulties, we are succeeding with Jesus Christ. We are showing how to face those uh, uh, difficulties, how to get over them and how to see the people who make even such obstacles as friends, as brothers and sisters. So such a kind of spirit of brotherly love even to those who appear to us as enemies is real witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, our Lord Jesus lived with uh, all kinds of people, people who opposed him. We know that there were three sections of the people continuously opposing in the public life the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the leaders of the priestly class. Because what they visualized about the, about the faith was not really the correct faith. Of course, they had faith in God, but they were guided by their own personal understanding of this faith. But Jesus had to correct it. Jesus had to correct their faith according to the plan of God, our, our Father, His own Father. So that kind of correction, when it was given, they were revolting against him. The political authorities were also were against Jesus, Herod, uh, Pontius Pilate, and even Caesar perhaps, was not seeing eye to eye with the, with the vision of Jesus Christ. And so there were oppositions from the higher classes like that. There was opposition also from the mob or from the people who were guided by these people such kind of opposition there. Let us look into the 12 people who were selected by Jesus, who had the vocation to be the apostles. They were also of different characters. There, were, there was one, as you know, who betrayed Jesus. There was another who became later the head of the church, really uh, denying him, denying the faith in him. But of course he repented and confessed his love for Jesus Christ and uh, Jesus appointed him the first uh, pope or the person who has to guide the church, early church. And then uh, we know that there were people who were very overzealous. Jesus preached the kingdom of God, but they thought that it is the kingdom of man, the kingdom to be established here on this earth. And because of that, they revolted. They wanted to establish the kingdom all on earth. 
they wanted to be one at the right side, another on the left side. And there were also other apostles of different characters. Even our own father in faith, St. Thomas the Apostle had uh, everything with the doubting question. He wanted to clarify things as much as possible. And we know that without dependence in Jesus Christ, we cannot have answers for everything. But St. Thomas was a questioning approach. So different characters coming together and making the church or the communion of the apostles a beautiful communion. Like that in the church, we have to move along with the different characters and different persons, different attitudes, different visions, different uh, missions, etc. But we may have to correct sometimes people who are wrong in their visions and missions. We may have to be confronting some realities which are not Christian, which are not a classic, but we have to do it. But at the same time, be brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. There should be communion, there should be participation, there should be real commitment to our mission as declared by the Holy Father in the Synodal Church. This is the theme of the Synodal Church which Jesus, which uh, Holy Father Pope Francis has declared. Let us be committed to this mission during this year of uh, Golden Jubilee of the CCR. May God bless you. Please pray for me and for the church in India and uh, elsewhere. Thanking you, I conclude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Your Eminence. We are so grateful for um, being part of this uh, session of the Golden Jubilee celebration of the CCR in India. And thank you for your message. I'm sure we'll all take to heart whatever that has been said. Uh, so we hope and wish that we will continue to meet in different occasions. Uh, we'll feel so blessed by your presence. And now as I move forward to the next um, session, um, uh, it'll be a presentation, quick presentation on Caris India, but more important is the panel discussion that follows thereafter. Uh, to be anchored by uh, Sister Paulina, who is from the MSMI. She, uh, of course, is the Secretary of the uh, National Service of Communion. Uh, we fondly call her Efficient Secretary because every time we have um, the NSC meeting, the minutes used to come almost a few hours after the meeting um, in, in, in soft copy and in, in mail. So uh, uh, I'm sure this evening she would conduct the panel discussion on various topics related to the CCR. Uh, the anchors are drawn from very various fields by various person, uh, important personalities. But uh, I'm, I'd like a sister to do that introduction to them. Uh, just a little mention of her is that she was uh, uh, a, a very bright student and she was actually a, a student of the Chartered Accountancy. But uh, during her studies, she had an encounter through a retreat uh, with Christ and um, she found the vocation to pursue, to stop uh, pursuing Chartered Accountancy and follow religious life. So this sudden turnabout is really miraculous and I'm sure the church has stand to benefit from uh, Sister Paulina. She being very efficient and uh, has contributed a lot to the CCR and also to her congregation, I am sure. So Sister, please take over and uh, share with us uh, the important panel discussions this evening. Thank you. We live in a world of multiple influences. Friends, school, college, peers, family, society, and to top of the chart is social media, print media, audio and video. The influence of media has transformed and evolved over the years. But the power of print media still remains the same. Nothing can replace the joy and fulfillment of reading. In our Christian journey, the mother of all reading material is the Holy Bible. There are 
millions of books, magazines, periodicals published worldwide to amplify the word of God and give the readers a deeper and personal experience of the Lord. Are you aware of one such periodical of Indian origin that has found its place on the desk of our Holy Father and has been rated as the top five periodicals by the Catholic Bishops Conference of India? Sisters and brothers, the monthly periodical that I am referring to is our very own Caris India. The idea of the magazine was conceived in the early 70s to help those who made initiation retreats, belonged to prayer groups and needed regular inputs for growth and guidance. We needed people to prepare the material and to get it distributed in different areas of the country. Father Fio took up the challenge and was the editor. Here are a few cover pages of yesteryears including the maiden copy and the cover page of the recent edition 1974 to 2022 what a glorious journey distribution was arranged through prayer groups and distant places by post the content were to be helpful for teaching in prayer groups catechism sermons keynote addresses and growth retreats the current subscribers and resource persons are cardinals, bishops, priests, religious women and men, lay faithful and the youth, giving us a true experience of the spirit of synodality. Sister Beach McKinnon, OSC, an Ireland born mystic and international preacher who preaches retreats for bishop, priests, lay faithful, has written, quote, I have traveled the world several times round and have read countless magazines produced by different organizations. I am happy to say Caris India is by far the best I have ever seen." Unquote. So here sisters and brothers, Caris India is completely planned, worked out and brought out by the lay faithful. Basic objective is renewal of the people of God. The quality of designing and the layout of the magazine is comparable with the best periodicals. That's the reason why the Catholic Bishops Conference of India has declared it as one of the top five best periodicals in India. Caris India provides spiritually rich and authentic Catholic teaching. We get complete updates on Caris initiatives regional and national programs of the National Service of Communion, it announces forthcoming programs of CARIS and NSE. To subscribe, contact your parish charismatic prayer group members or you can WhatsApp or email us at plus 91-920-538-5555 at so praise the Lord and a warm welcome to all the viewers who have joined in from all the four corners of our country uh, into the second day of the concluding celebrations of the golden jubilee year of the charismatic renewal, uh, renewal in India. Uh, we are entering into a time of uh, sharing panel sharing by very eminent personalities from the Renewal family. And I'm going to get them on screen for you all. All our three panelists are going to be joining in from uh, various places and in between their ministries right now. So here we have with us uh, first Father Joseph Tamaravalli. As you see him on screen, uh, this is Father Joseph Tamaravalli, a native of Cherthala in Kerala. He was ordained in 1993 as a priest in the Archdiocese of Ernakulam Angamali in 1993. Yeah, and uh, he 
has been um, uh, he he is presently um, the uh, chairman of the Kerala Service of Communion appointed by the Kerala Regional Bishops Conference called the KCBC. So over the last years of his priestly ministry, he has uh, served in several parishes and held various prestigious responsibilities in the archdiocese. So to be the chairman of the uh, Kerala Service of Communion, uh, he was the director of the Bible Apostolate of the Archdiocese. He was also the director of the Department of Evangelization and Prayer Groups. And he's also served as the assistant director of the Department of Catechesis in the Archdiocese. Uh, Father Joseph is a very vibrant, dynamic priest uh, who is traveling all around Kerala uh, to fulfill his responsibilities as the uh, chairman of the Kerala Service of Communion. He travels right from uh, the northern tip of Kerala uh, to the southern tip of Kerala. He's always on the move. Uh, and he still made up this time to be with us. Uh, thank you, Father Joseph, for joining us. We, uh, we then have with us uh, Reverend Sister Elsis Matthew from uh, the Congregation of the Missionary Sisters of Mary Immaculate. Uh, she is quite a familiar face to most of y'all. Uh, she's come into the renewal in 1978. Um, she uh, had an encounter uh, with the renewal during her days of graduation in college. And from there on, she grew in the renewal and uh, she soon joined the congregation of MSMI, which also incidentally is a charismatic congregation. And uh, due to which she, was, she had plenty of opportunities to preach and teach the word of God. And in particular, teach people about charisms. Um, from my association with her and as a member of the same congregation that she belongs to, I very confidently say that she is one of the few top speakers in our country who can speak authoritatively and very authentically about authentically about charisms. Uh, she has served as a member of the national service team for two terms, uh, during which she uh, preached a lot of retreats, especially uh, to the seminarians. And she is also sought after person in the congregation as she was elected as a member of the provincial council as well as the general council. So uh, welcome, Sister Elsis. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we also have with us as our next panelist, uh, a person who does not need introduction, actually. Uh, yet, it's my duty. And so uh, I uh, welcome wholeheartedly uh, Mr. Savio Mascarinis, uh, who's a native of Goa. He's a businessman by profession uh, and a devoted husband and a doting father of four children by uh, he's been actively involved in renewal since 1977. Uh, he has served as the chairman of the Goa service team for about three years and also in the national service team. Uh, he is an avid reader, writer, preacher, animator of uh, retreats. Um, his, his contributions to the renewal have, have been versatile. Um, he's a regular contributor to the Caris India magazine and he's authored several articles and uh, the famous book uh, by NCO Publications, it's always on fire. So welcome to the three of you uh, to this time of panel sharing. So uh, uh, my uh, first um, question I would say uh, would be posed to uh, Brother Savio, uh, like as we talked about your book, which is always on fire, which is primarily about prayer groups. Uh, Brother Savio, could you please um, uh, brief our viewers uh, who are mostly, uh, you know, old members of the renewal, but we also have some members who have, you know, newly logged on uh, to participate in this Golden Jubilee celebrations. Could you briefly tell us about the importance of uh, prayer groups uh, in, in the renewal? Thank you, sister. I believe that a prayer group is a spiritual powerhouse. And a prayer meeting, as I always say, is spiritual dynamite. Now, the late Cardinal Leo Joseph Sunins had said that the renewal is a movement of the spirit offered to the entire church and destined to rejuvenate every face of the church's life. And a prayer group is so important because this is exactly what it does. It rejuvenates everyone who is a member of a prayer group. Now, the late Pope, St. John Paul II, 
had aptly called prayer groups as a grace to sanctify and to renew the church. Through this grace received at the participation of, at, a, at a prayer meeting, we are made holy, we are renewed, we come closer and walk in an intimate way with the Lord. We are made holy, as I feel always, by attending prayer meetings in our prayer groups. We are rejuvenated, revived, revitalized, repaired, restored, and also refreshed. There is a beautiful song they used to sing in Latin, Veni Sancte Spiritus. It beautifully sums up the dynamics of a prayer group and what exactly happens at a prayer meeting. Veni Sancte Spiritus, in English translated says, come Holy Spirit, water what is dry, bend what is rigid, and fire what is cold. This is what happens at a prayer meeting and prayer groups that build and have strong spirit-filled prayer meetings can really bring this dimension very strongly. Mm -hmm. Attending a prayer meeting and being part of a prayer group, in short, because time is very brief, I can say helps each one of us to be on fire for the Lord. And that's exactly when I was writing this book, because I felt prayer groups have to be built up and I was thinking of a title. Somehow I was inspired to give the title to that book, Always on Fire, because prayer groups help us to be on fire for the Lord. Yes, uh, thank you, Brother Savio. And rightly so, because uh, uh, that is really the inception, you could say, of the renewal. You know, It all began with, you could say, a prayer meeting. So uh, you very rightly pointed out how that is actually rejuvenating and reviving uh, the spirit of individuals. Prayers. Thank you. So connected to that, Sister Elsie's, um, uh, we uh, also know that what is really unique about our charismatic prayer meetings are, uh, you know, the use of charisms. Uh, so could you also talk on the same lines as to what really is the importance of charisms in uh, in in the CCR in the in the renewal? Uh, Peace the Lord. Thank you, Sister Paulina. Importance of charisms. Okay. Um, uh, the use of charisms, uh, we could see all through the Bible from beginning to the end. And in the life of Jesus and the early church and the life of apostles, they all used charisms uh, in their ministry, especially to building up of the church, build up of the holy church, building up the body of church. So, charisms are freely given and uh, it is for everyone. Those who believe in Jesus have all these charisms. Mark 16, 17, Jesus says those who believe these signs will accompany. So, Ephesians 4, 12 says to build up the body of Christ, the Lord has given us charisms. So, Charisms are tools for evangelization. Without charisms, uh, we cannot do the mission of Christ. We cannot build up the body of Christ. In the Old Testament, prophets used, and also in the New Testament, all are familiar with charisms, and also especially those who receive baptisms have all these charisms, but we are not aware. I believe um, uh, it is one of the main central goals of CCR is to, to understand and use charisms in our ministries. St. Paul, uh, the six says, um, how wonderful it would be uh, if the Lord still increase an outpouring of charisms in order to make the church fruitful and beautiful and uh, marvelous. Also, Pope says, charisms, gifts are given of God, which make the church richer, more lively, etc. So, without charisms, uh, we cannot show God's love 
and power because one of the purpose of charisms is to show god's love and power and also uh, when we use charisms actually we are destroying the power of satan and uh, we are bringing the presence of lord in our midst through charisms so ccr uh, uh, before the second vatican council uh, we we can say we are in a uh, era of dark age so through the charismatic renewal we ha- we have come to the light that is in one way we can say using of charisms because in the beginning the early church the church was built up by through charisms so it is one of the main important duty of ccr is to build up to promote and encourage charisms in day to day life yes okay. yeah. thank you thank you sister elsis you have also very uh, well brought out how it developed from the beginning and how our church is actually Uh, charismatic in nature by its very birth so uh, and therefore how important it is uh, to use the charism which are freely given by the lord um, so uh, when we are talking in this context of prayer groups uh, you know in in a parish setup and uh, also uh, people who are in the renewal uh, increasingly using uh, charisms uh, there this requires a, a certain level of um, ecclesial uh, maturity since we uh we are in the church uh, and activating all these charisms that are given by the holy spirit so um i would like to ask father joseph uh, what uh, really you think would be you know the kind of ecclesial maturity that is required uh for people who are you know um uh, in in the renewal thank you sister they are loving friends now the question is very relevant i was uh, in a retreat center for almost 3 years as a director then also i was with the prayer groups many a time um, uh, the priest and the people outside of charismatic movement used to tell me that uh, you people are so emotional you are after miracles you are so sentimental Uh, sometimes they even uh, tell me that you are uh, so mad and mental like that so to be frank i used to think that uh, uh, sometimes we have to be little more mature in our expressions the hierarchy also should accept the charisms are given by the holy spirit and the charisms are there the community of the faithful also should accept that the charisms are real and charisms are there but many a time charismatic groups think that we people think that we are something different and we have all the uh, spiritual charisms and we are superior to these groups so sometimes there is uh, a difficulty in accepting the uh, charismatic groups in their way of expression so people used to tell us that you have you have to be ecclesially mature you have to be mature you have to be emotionally balanced all this in fact as i am uh 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 before you in sharing my experiences uh i frankly tell you that uh, uh first of all we the charismatic people should accept the fact that charisms are given by the holy spirit charisms are there freely given by the holy spirit that we may build up the community of faithful so it is to build up the community of the faithful and it is to uh, build up the uh, whole world as the lord wants so charisms are freely given so that we may build up the church and that is the meaning that uh, i understand that 
I understand that the uh, the charisms are given by the Lord to build up the church. So it is given to each and every one, each and every baptized. The charisms are there. Charisms. The church is charismatic, and everyone is bestowed with the charisms. So, in a very special way, we were able to discover the charisms given by the Holy Spirit, and the charisms. We must really understand that it is given by the Lord, not only. Really to the charismatic but also to all people so we must uh, use this charisms to build up the church so to be a classically mature i understand that we must really with humility accept the fact that uh, the charisms are given by the lord to build up the church so uh, with that openness we must use the charisms it is not to uh, uh, suppress the charisms but we must use uh, the charisms uh, to build up the church so that is the first point that i want uh, to yes. yes thank you father joseph so being in the line of uh, you know the sharing on charisms and also because brother savio i think has lost connection uh, sister elsis could you also throw some light as to uh, you know what what stage uh, uh, is you think according to you is the church in presently uh, you know in in dealing with charisms uh, present stage since we are talking about you know the renewal today and father joseph was also trying to uh, explain that how charisms have to be understood to directly uh, church hierarchy and also by those who have been gifted by these charisms to use them in a very prudent way uh, with the sole intention of building up the church uh, but according to you sister elsis uh, what is the stage that we are in right now uh, do you really think people are um, aware of the true importance of charisms uh, are they growing in charisms what really do you think is impression right now about charisms in the church at present uh, uh, we cannot judge as it is because in different ways uh, in different places uh, the spirit moves as he wills that only i want to say but we when when we look into the early church uh, um, they were very much obedient to the holy spirit prompting some holy spirit they were eagerly to use the charisms they encouraged Each other, uh, they want to use charisms for evangelization. Such today, so people are thinking that without charisms, we can spread the good news. That we uh, that I notice uh, sometimes. Uh, preaching of word is enough, but in the life of Jesus and apostles, uh, in the gospel proclama proclamation, uh, uh, charisms were inseparable. They always uh, use the charisms. So it is uh, one way I can say diminishing, uh, but we cannot say it is diminishing fully. Time to wait for the Holy Spirit. Uh, so um, uh, it is like a, a uh, fragile plant to carry some snow. We have to look after. We should be very careful to build up the carry some. So people have, you know. Desire for to build up, so we can say uh, from the beginning when we look at the renewal in Kerala, especially 1978, it was not so growing well. But afterwards, it come up nicely. But now at present, it was not growing as it was happened before. So the thing is uh, uh, too much of uh, uh, too much of. Um, And those who are sent to preach the word of God, no time to sit for uh, to listen to the Lord. That may be the reasons, but it's not. I I don't believe can say maybe a diminishing stage. Okay. Is it okay? 
yes yes sister uh, you you're clear uh, so uh, you are also in a way trying to point out that uh, um, there is a danger if you know if uh, charisms are not nourished uh, there's a very beautiful analogy that you use that of a fragile plant i really liked it you know that's how you're supposed to be nurturing the charisms uh, both individually as persons as well as a community for which we need the entire church to be uh, open to the holy spirit after all that really is the call of every christian to be docile and open to the holy spirit so that was a very beautiful analogy sister and i'm i'm sensing from what you're saying that if Uh, if charisms aren't given that uh, the kind of importance that it had in the early church then there is a danger of we turning up the church becoming uh, just like any other secular organization uh, rather than a spiritual uh, community of persons so uh, we we see that as you are pointing out unfortunately uh, brother uh, savio is uh, having some issues and he's not able to connect back otherwise we could have actually asked him if there is a connection between you know uh, the diminishing use of charisms and also the uh, you know the prayer groups in some way dying out uh, because presently we see that uh, the kind of enthusiasm that was there in during the initial years of the renewal in the prayer groups uh, is now kind of diminishing both with the number of prayer groups reducing uh, as well as the uh, you know the uh, attendees at the prayer uh, meetings also coming down so we we would have loved to know from brother savio as to if there is really a connection between you know the uh, decreasing uh, use of charisms and you know prayer groups also diminishing um uh, sister elsis could you uh, probably pull in your idea do you think there is a connection since brother savio is not there uh like you know maybe because we uh, we have somehow failed to foster the importance of charisms that there is a re- that could also be one of the reasons that prayer groups are uh, diminishing in some way do you think so sister uh, yeah um um the purpose of uh, charism uh, charism is to show god's love isn't it and his power uh, then when we are not using the charism power and presence of god will not be manifested and uh, love and unity gradually diminish in uh, services especially uh, prayer groups uh, and also in individual ministries uh, then uh, when we uh, we are um, lack of using charisms bring more focus on human effects like talents human intellect uh, because of that faith will be de- decrease so uh, prayer groups uh, will be remain dead um, just following the traditional base so these charisms can affect the prayer group uh, uh, in different ways and uh, when we are not using the charisms Uh, it brings uh, no unity and empowerment in the church so charisms work unity you know and also uh, there is no love uh, when we use charisms we should operate uh, by love uh, there is no charism there is no love and paul says without love if you use charisms there is no meaning and also the role of leadership in the church is to bring forth charisms now we cannot see real leaders in the church uh, all our leaders but the real spirit filled leaders not see in the renewal uh, they some are coming and going uh, those who are remaining in the renewal uh, we cannot see many so these are or affecting our prayer groups uh, in the renewal and uh, uh, usually uh, the charisms give glory to god because uh, they reveal god's love and uh, there is no glory people are seeking their own uh, financial uh, enrichment for their own platform through using charisms that also affecting prayer groups and renewal uh, because of lack of using charisms so, so in yes. different ways yeah yeah thank you sister so that kind of gives me a connecting point uh, to uh, which i can put forward to brother joseph uh, sister was mentioning you know how the use of charisms uh, had uh, or has probably become a point of uh, you know uh, self glorification you know that is where uh, the point for uh, ecclesial maturity comes we see uh, especially uh, in kerala where you are based you see a flood of uh, retreat centers 
and um, how uh, you know sometimes uh, people mistake um, sensationalism you know uh, to be yeah. actually a, uh, the charisms and so there is this lack of you know maturity once again coming back yeah. to the same point of ecclesial maturity coming in because of a, um, a, a misconceived idea of uh, charisms which instead of actually glorifying god is bringing that glory to say, the preacher or you know the uh, directors or of you know the uh, administrative person of the religious centers so what do you think uh, father joseph uh, can be done in order to curtail that kind of a trend uh, you know to bring our, our people back uh, to the right understanding that charisms is are meant for building up the community and not your own uh, self or your self projects you know so what do you think mm-hmm. would be the measures in the thing yeah uh, uh, sister what you said is absolutely right sometimes because uh, we focus sometimes on the persons rather than charisms we focus on the persons who have charisms so we uh, try to uh, think that this person and we go after this person so we may go after uh, to one retreat center to another another so uh, like people going up and down so people are not coming to jesus christ and people are not sometimes depending uh, sorry to say that uh, we also sometimes promote people coming to us not to jesus and not to the holy spirit and in fact earlier we used to say that uh, even the in the retreat center we used to say that you must go back to your parish and go back to your community and you be there like leaven and you are there the holy spirit is given charisms that you may really Uh, charge that parish, renew that parish, and you have got the mission there. So, whoever may be the parish priest, whoever may be the reverend sisters there, whoever may be the situations, but you are uh, given uh, special charisms so that you be there as a uh, leaven and to transform this community. So, each one should experience that he, she, or he is given the charisms. and he is or she is sent back to his parish uh, and sent back to to his um, um, uh, um, uh, his so uh, family and ev- wherever he is sent wherever he is there he is there to preach uh, the kingdom of god so charity should be uh, experience and uh, that should not focus or uh, should not go after any persons but each one should realize that he he or she is given charisms of the holy spirit gifts of the holy spirit uh, the charisms are there and that is in each i believe that even in a prayer group prayer group uh, even in a, in every prayer group the people are filled with the holy spirit and the charisms are there they should experience and every day as we are experiencing the power of the holy spirit power of the uh, spirit in us holy spirit in us that that people will gather uh, to the, um, uh, the that prayer group also will, will become powerful and that prayer group uh, not depending on any person it is not depending on any person not uh, idolizing anybody but we must concentrate on the gifts of the holy spirit charisms of the holy spirit and we must really uh, become uh, leaven to the parish so yes. the community will be uh, building up, up every day by the holy spirit thank you okay. father yeah thank you father so brother joseph uh, uh, brother savio sorry uh, while you were gone uh, while you were gone we we were discussing uh, a few points also related to you know prayer groups and we were mentioning how probably one of the reasons for the prayer groups to be uh, you know diminishing is also because of the diminishing use of charisms in uh, in the prayer groups uh, do you uh, would you like to add on to any further reasons uh, you know as to why you think prayer groups are now like you know uh gradually like dying out uh, in the present situation could you add some more points to that 
Yeah, sister, I do agree with what father was saying that our prayer meetings, uh, in a way, are just becoming prayer meetings. And our prayer groups are meant to be charismatic prayer groups. So the use of charisms has to be promoted, has to be encouraged, nurtured, and people have to be guided. But, uh, I mean, when we talk about prayer groups going down also, I remember reading something in that uh, beautiful book, uh, which was released by the uh, ICRIS, the International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services. It was a document on the baptism in the spirit. In that book, they said, and I think this is something also very pertinent to us, that apostleship holds the first place in the hierarchy of charisms. And that in apostleship, charisms should be properly overseen and coordinated. Now, with what Father Joseph was saying earlier, I totally agree with him because we have first to be apostles and charisms have to be uh, nurtured and uh, encouraged in the prayer groups because we are not simple prayer groups. We are called to be charismatic prayer groups. Okay. Thank you, Brother Samuel. Uh, so, yes, we come to the conclusion of this uh, panel sharing. Thank you uh, to all three panelists. You have very clearly um, uh, put down uh, what really is the reality, because that is the topic of our discussion and reflection today among all our viewers. Uh, the renewal today in the country, as we are uh, uh, concluding, you know, the golden jubilee year of, of the charismatic renewal in India. So we see how important prayer groups are, we see how important charisms are, and we see how important it is for all of us as authentic disciples of Christ to have uh, to possess uh, a maturity, ecclesial maturity, whereby we never forget the fact that we're all members of Christ called to build up the body of Christ. So uh, thank you very much uh, to all our three panelists uh, for taking your time out to talk to all of us. And uh, let's all pray together and hope that there would once again be a revival, uh, a renewal with a spur of prayer groups, uh, with the right use of charisms. May our our church become vibrant with the use of charisms and may all of us together, the ch church leaders as well as uh, the lady in the church, be united uh, by the Holy Spirit who truly is the founder of the charismatic renewal. So thank you very much and God bless you all for your contributions to the renewal in our country. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister, for the conduct of the panel sharing on challenges of the CCR and also of course thank you so much all the panelists who have spent time to uh, study to prepare uh, and to understand what are the challenges in the CCR your uh, the panel discussion has really benefited us all so thank you so much as now we move forward to the healing adoration which will be led by father Augustine Valorant um, so please um, uh, take part in this uh, healing adoration and uh, receive the blessing that the Lord Jesus will shower upon us uh, through the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, I congratulate you all for your active participation in CCR Golden Jubilee celebrations. Carries National Service of Communion is a coordinating body of all CCR activities in the nation. The CCR activities are coordinated through the National Charismatic Office located in New Delhi. The NCO is managed by the administrator and four other office staffs. The NCO also houses the National Intercession Center where a community of Four sisters are constantly interceding before the Blessed Sacrament. Until the pandemic could strike, the NCO was managed through the funds received by the organizing programs and conventions. Presently, the programs have become online and imposed financial constraints in the management of NCO. Hence, we request you 
to generously donate towards the maintenance of NCO, a national intercession center. This would help carry national service of communion to envisage the mission of Christ through your support. The details of the account for sending your contributions will be shared to you. Kindly join hands together with Carrie's National Service of Communion to spread the good news of Christ. Thank you. God bless you. God is here. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses said to the people, What nation is there on the face of the earth to which God is so near, so close as our nation? That was a prophecy, a prophecy to be fulfilled in the Holy Eucharist, the nation that we are, a God so close to us, so near to us. Let us worship Him. Let us adore Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah.
reading from the holy gospel according to mark chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 again jesus entered the synagogue there was a man there who had a withered hand they watched him closely to see if he would cure him on the sabbath so that they might accuse him he said to the man with the withered hand come up here before us then he said to them is it lawful to do good on the sabbath rather than to do evil to save life rather than to destroy it but they remained silent looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart he said to the man stretch out your hand he stretched it out and his hand was restored the pharisees went out and immediately to counsel with the herodians against him to put him to death the gospel of the lord praise you lord jesus christ my dear sisters and brothers a healing event but more than a healing event it is revelation revelation who god is revelation who i am who and i am to god especially in the moments of our troubles of our distress who is god revealed to us in this event jesus was in the synagogue and his eyes were looking searching there were many men sitting there capable healthy but his eyes fell on a very incapable unhealthy man a man with a withered hand mercy flowed out of him he wanted to heal him but he knew he could not he was not permitted to heal him it was sabbath on the sabbath healing was forbidden and therefore he asked those sitting around what is to be done on the sabbath to do good or evil to kill or give life what did jesus mean not to heal him not to give him life is to kill him is to deny life to him what does it mean right hand withered a withered life a withered future he could not marry he could not raise a family he could not work he could not have a future jesus knew if he did not heal him this man had no life no future he wanted to heal him mercy flowed out of him he wanted to heal him but he knew if he healed him and if he gave him a life he would lose his own life it was sabbath to violate sabbath would mean death this exactly what happened the pharisees and herodians to counsel against him the first time a plot was there to kill him but jesus did not care whatever happened to him he wanted to give this man life 
reach your hand out to me. He reached his hand out and he was healed. Revelation who God is. But God is concerned about all the time. In the moments of my trouble, in the moments of my distress, in the moments of my sickness, God is concerned about me. Not weighing the consequences. God will come to my rescue. A revelation. Let us, with this revelation in mind, pray for the world today. The world today in distress. The nations fighting against each other. War-torn countries, Pope Francis cried out from St. Peter's Basilica, Stop this inhuman massacre, madness of massacre. A historical statement. Let's pray that God's mercy, God's mercy may descend upon all the nations, upon all the leaders of the nations, that they may realize bloodbath and violence and war, no answer for anything. Peace is the answer. They need to come together around a table and settle disputes. And that is true not only of nations, families. Are there conflicts in your families? Conflicts are not to be resolved by hatred and anger and revenge and fighting with each other and court cases. This madness of violence is to stop. Oh God, let your mercy descend upon every conflict of the families, upon every conflict of the nations, every conflict in marriages, every conflict in parishes, between parishes, every conflict among individuals. Have mercy. Let's keep our hands open in front of us. God's whose nature is mercy. There's mercy flow down. Flow down to us. Wherever there is war. Wherever there is conflict. Wherever there is bloodshed. Wherever there is revenge and hatred. Let every heart experience the immensity of the mercy of our God. The power of the mercy of our God. Have mercy on us, O Lord, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blow Mercy on us. A mercy on the world. A mercy on families. A mercy on nations. Let your mercy pour out. Wash away our iniquity. Wash away all the hatred and anger and revenge. Have mercy. According to your unfailing According love. to your great compassion. 
your great compassion blot out our transgressions let every heart be touched let there be healing in a healing come to every heart heart of the leaders heart of the fathers heart of the mothers Wash away our iniquity. Let love prevail. Let mercy prevail. Cleanse us from our sin. Cleanse us from our sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Bless you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Jesus. Lord, we we claim we claim everyone sick. Everyone sick over here, we claim your promise. I will comfort you. I will comfort you. Your comfort that came as a healing for the sick a sight for the blind as ability to work for the paralyzed as cleansing for the lepers as forgiveness for the sinners as peace for the families lord let your mercy descend your comfort you said come to me we come to you with faith that everyone claim this promise every sick person claim this promise promise of the lord i will comfort you every sick person who came to jesus felt it the power the power of healing the power of healing descending into every part of the body no sick person ever went back unhealed my brother aren't you my sister aren't you in the presence of jesus feel the power feel the power of the lord now moving in every part of your body healing you healing you come to me come to me lord i come to you claiming your promise your comfort the comfort of your mercy Come on to me Come on to me Oh your voice oh jesus the voice of your mercy come to me Thank you, Lord. I will 
you are giving me rest you are giving me rest thank you lord rest from my body rest from my mind rest from my soul rest from my family relationships you're giving me rest i claim your promise your promise you're giving me rest oh god you're giving me rest thank you lord for your rest your heavenly comfort flowing into my body every part of my body that is sick your heavenly comfort your heavenly rest flowing into my mind giving me peace in my mind forgiveness and salvation to my soul lord thank you for your rest thank you lord jesus praise you jesus hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. praise you jesus thank you the soul wait for a fresh anointing of the holy spirit today the holy spirit coming upon us upon every one of us the spirit who descended on the day of pentecost on mother mary and the apostles now descending upon us upon every one of us in power in the power of love and peace and joy and love and all the gifts and charisms and the fruits of the holy spirit descending upon us and reaching us and reaching the church in our ministry in our ministry in our family in the church as a whole there is experience the empowering the empowering of the holy spirit spirit of god you're the promise the promise of the lord we claim your promise in all humility in all humility lord and love we claim your promise holy spirit come come and fill us I'm thirsting for your presence oh Lord Come and fill me up Lord let your mercy wash away all of my sin Fill me Lord. with your love. Fill me completely with your love. Once again, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you. I want you. I want you. I love you. I love you. Presence. Your presence. I need you. Holy Spirit. I Holy Spirit I love your presence I love your presence in me Jesus come and fill me up Come and fill me hallelujah 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 You can feel the spirit everyone feel the spirit the holy spirit descending descending upon you like fire like the living water everyone thirsty experiencing the refreshing flow refreshing flow of the living water hallelujah hallelujah 
praise you lord jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus thank you lord praise you bless you bless you jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus thank you lord praise you let us receive the blessing of the lord this blessing that brings down god's mercy into the nations of the world into our families into our prayer groups into our parishes into the heart of every one of us healing us refreshing us and anointing us with the holy spirit let us worship him adore him and receive the blessing of the lord down in adoration falling low the sacred host we from heaven having in itself all the light let us pray lord jesus christ you gave us the eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death may our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the father and the holy spirit one god forever and ever
come to the conclusion of today's uh, uh, session, the second day. Let us thank the Lord for being so kind and so generous and uh, to have enabled us to spend this nearly two hours and a half listening to the Word of God, listening to the wonderful things that He has done in the, in the CCR India and uh, listening to the panel discussions uh, that has enlightened us, I'm sure, and, and blessing us through the Eucharistic um, adoration. I'm sure we all have been blessed this evening and uh, we look forward to meeting you again in tomorrow's uh, last and uh, final day of the concluding session of the Golden Jubilee celebration. I also like to thank all those who have participated in sharing and making this evening uh, meaningful. Uh, Archbishop Francis Callis, His Eminence Cardinal Alan Cherry, the panelists um, who participated in discussing the challenges of the CCR, the uh, YFOC team Chennai, and of course Father Augustine Valuran for um, conduct of the healing adoration. Thank you all of you and see you tomorrow. Goodbye and good night.